Hi, Tracy. First and foremost, congratulations for winning the Miss World Philippines crown. Um, more than a few days after winning the title, how does it feel? First of all, thank you so much for that. Thank you for introducing me and thank you for this opportunity to be interviewed by you guys. Thank you, Bon. Um, actually, even after a few days, it still hasn't sunk in yet that I actually that I actually made it, that I actually won the Miss World Philippines crown. Um, I'm still trying to get used to everything. Basically, I feel like my life just switched in an instant, but still the same girl, still the same provinciana, the simple girl. I'm just really trying to get used to the new schedules and all the interviews most especially, but I'm just enjoying every single moment. I'm just very, very happy to be here for. Wow. Um, Tracy, I look back at your um, pageant journey since you started joining pageantries in Cebu and national pageants, um, you are one of the best examples that, you know, keep on trying and trying and trying until you, you, you get your goal, until you succeed. What pushes you to, to, to join Miss World Philippines and what does this win, what does this win mean to you now that you get the crown? For me, Paul, I'm here, I've never stopped trying despite failing so many times because first of all, I really want to be here. I really want to fulfill my dream. And I'm a born fighter. For I've been through so much in my life. For all of those who don't know my backstory, I lived a very challenging life. And so in every situation, I always just try to tell myself that I'm strong enough to do everything and anything that I set my heart into. Even if a lot of people may tell me that I should stop doing things because it's already hard for me or that I should redirect my path to some other things, I still want to think that I, I am the only one who can decide my future. So even if I do fail, that's fine. It's okay to cry. It's okay to doubt yourself a little bit. But then again, it's very important for you to pull yourself back up because no one else can believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. So that's my mantra all the time that if I want something, I got to work hard for it. I have to push for it because I will never reach it if I don't try. Great, great, good mantra coming from a queen like you, Tracy. So Tracy, can you give us a glimpse of what's your life growing up in, in Cebu? So actually, po, um, I grew up in Mindanao until grade 6, I, specifically in Agusan del Sur. And then in high school, uh, we all moved to Cebu in Argao. That's a province in Cebu. And then I spent my college years in Cebu City. So basically, I've lived my life in Mindanao and in the Visayas. And now I'm trying my luck here in Manila. So I'd like to think that I've already lived in Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. And I have all the experiences and the, the, all the things that I need so that I could represent our country well, all from the three largest islands of the Philippines. and. For me, I think I'm just a simple girl. I've lived a simple life all my life. I grew up with my single mom. Um, I don't really, I haven't really met my dad. Met my dad, I just know him by his name. But unfortunately, my mom also passed away 10 years ago. And I was really young, such a young age. Um, now I'm already an orphan. I also don't have siblings. So it's just me and my life. But I'm still fortunate enough that I have all my relatives with me. That I'm very close to them and my cousins and also my friends. I'm surrounded with amazing people. Although I don't technically have a biological family anymore, I see my friends and my relatives as my family. And they have always been my support system all throughout. Also my team, my team in Cebu and my team in Manila, they have never stopped believing in me and supporting me in any way they can. And for that, I'm just very grateful for them. 
And my win is not mine. It's all for them. It's all for my mom in heaven. Uh, that's so touching. Thank you for opening up your life, Tracy. But Tracy, um, you are already an engineer, right? You're an industrial engineer, correct? So, yes, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's something big already. But why did you still pursue your your passion and your love for for pageantry for for joining pageants yes well that was one me being an industrial engineer is already a feat on its own because that is also something that i really worked hard for losing my mom at such a young age completing my education had also been a huge struggle for me so that is also an achievement that i'd like to dedicate for my family and for my mom and at the same time i also pursued my dream in pageantry first because my mom was also a beauty queen during her time she joined binibini filipinas 1979 she was batchmates with miss melanie marquez and it's funny what's her because name? I'm sorry what's her name her name oh, yeah. my, my mom's name shona perez Wow, okay. And yeah, continue. Um, she was batchmates with Miss Melanie and during 2019, Miss World Philippines 2019, the first national pageant I joined, I was also batchmates with Michelle D, which is the daughter of us, of Miss Melanie Marquez. And now for the Miss World Philippines 2021, I'm just very fortunate that Michelle also crowned me as her successor. So I feel like it's such a beautiful story to tell that if things are meant for you, it will just really come to you at the perfect timing, at God's timing. So for all of those who are planning to stop on dreaming, if they feel like they're already discouraged and tired, please just, I hope that you see this as an inspiration to, to remind yourself that anything is possible as long as you again keep trying. Yes, amen to that. Amen to that, Tracy. <laughs> now that you won the Miss World Philippines and you're about to represent the country for the Miss World pageant. What are the advocacies that you are pushing through for the, for the larger arena? Yes, my main advocacy is, of course, just like what I had shared earlier, I'm, I have been raised by my single mom. And so I dedicate that to all the solo parents as well. I have been doing some work with the community that I am in with the Solo, pa Solo Parents Federation in my community in Cordova. And I have heard all of their stories and definitely I can relate to them. I have been reminded, even after losing my mom for 10 years now, I was reminded of how my life was like when I was younger, all the struggles that my mom had to go through just so she could raise a family on her own. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. I, I've seen all the tears, all the hard work, and I feel like I have a responsibility to fulfill for the solo parents, just like my mom. Even though I could no longer do it for my mom physically, I feel like if I do it for them, I'm also doing it for my mom. And so with the Miss World Philippines platform, I'd like to use my voice and my influence to, to also uplift their lives, the solo parents out there, all the solo parents, not just in my community, but this time in the whole country. And at the same time, I also stand for the frontliners. Um, if you guys remember, I was asked during the coronation night, one of the biggest things I learned and the things that I hope people would learn out of this pandemic. And for me, it's that we should always remind ourselves that we should never take for granted the small things, the simple things, just like our health, our family, of course, and of course, to be grateful to the people who protect us, our frontliners. And so I would like to use this voice as well to remind our leaders to take care of our frontliners. And for us common people, even a small thank you, even a small appreciation to our frontliners can go a long way. Wow, wow, nice, nice points, Tracy. Um, it seems like all the, the stories you've mentioned from, from you know from being a an orphan and growing up um, without your mom happened in your coronation night because if I'm not mistaken, you fell twice on stage and then you stood up and you know as if nothing happened. 
So, what are your realizations? Kamusta ka? May sugat ba? May pilay ba? How are you right now after those incidents? Yes. Other people have been messaging me and, well, I just want to address that. I'm I'm okay, guys. Please don't worry about me. Um, It's just unfortunate that it happened, but I don't see it as something negative. Again, I just... I just thought of it as some as a representation of my life in general. I had to fall so many times and I had to pull myself back up and still look at the brighter side of things because then again in life, it's like that. Everything can happen to us. All the challenges will come, but we have to fight. We, we, got, to, we got to stop crying. We have to still smile despite everything and remind ourselves that there is a future to look forward to. And that's that's what's happening to me. I wouldn't be here if I stopped dreaming. I wouldn't be here if I just let myself be lost in my tears and all the, the heartbreaks that I've experienced in my life. Because then again, I want to be happy. I choose to be happy. And you, you should all choose to be happy too. It's up to you guys. It's all up to us. Yes. Yes to that, Tracy. Now, let's... M- Talk about oh. Miss World pageant now. Um, any idea when and where the Miss World pageant will be held? Yes, it's definitely in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 16. So I'll be leaving sometime November. I don't have the final schedules just yet. I'm still, right now, I'm still doing my media week and some other appearances that um, are scheduled by the organization. But definitely all the trainings are going to continue. I have already been training for so long. Um, this is already my third th- third try in the national pageants. And I feel like all the hard work that I have put into this for the past years, I would finally be able to showcase it all to you guys and show not just myself, but also the talent of all the Filipinos and especially all the Cebuanos out there. I'll be bringing them with me to the world stage. Wow, we're excited to that. But Tracy, I just want to know your thoughts because among the national, among the um, pageants internationally, the you know the, the big four and the other pageants, it seems like Miss World Crown is so elusive for the Philippines. You know, we just won, what, a few years back with Megan, and then, you know, um, we keep on trying, we keep on trying to win another blue crown. Do you feel that pressure of getting the second elusive crown of Miss World for the Philippines? Because we've been aiming for that for so long. To be very honest, I don't, I don't like to pressure myself too much. If anything, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to compete and to represent our country. I fell twice in the stage, and I feel like it's a sign that I will be getting and bringing home the second Miss World crown for the Philippines. And to add to that, um, I'm also a miracle baby. My my life is such a such an amazing story, and. Me being here, doing all the impossibles, I'd like to think that I can do that for the Philippines as well. We just have to keep trying. We should never give up on Miss World because we will get it back. Yes, wow. (laughs) That's my girl, Tracy. (laughs) Tracy, um, just one more thing because um, pageant fans, Filipino fans are screaming because what's with... Cebu. Ano bang meron sa Cebu? Because back-to-back, Miss Universe and Miss World Philippines are both mm-hmm. Cebuanas. You and and Beatrice. So what what does it feel mm-hmm. that you are lifting the the the, re, the Cebuanas in Philippine pageantry? Well, the Cebuanas are already known in the in the pageant world. And we're just two of those queens, we are just addition to the amazing queens that Cebu has already produced in the past. And when people ask us what we drink or what we eat, um, nature's drink. <laughs> but kidding aside, I think that Cebu is, Cebu is just home. And when we compete, we always bring home with us. We never forget home. We never forget the people that pushed us to be here 
And Cebuanas are known to be resilient and strong. And I think that's one of the biggest and most important qualities that any queen should possess because being a beauty queen is very difficult. You are faced with so many criticisms. People would have so much to say about you. And you just have to just block the noise and focus on the positive, focus on the things that you have to do. And as for me, I will focus all my energy on representing our country in the world stage and giving it my best to bring home the crown. Yes, and with that, I wanna lead on to that statement. What is your oath to the Filipino people, to the Filipino fans on your journey towards getting the second Miss World Crown for the Philippines? To all the Filipinos, mga kababayan, I promise to stop at nothing to bring home the Miss World crown for all of us. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. Salamat ka ayo. Um, Salamat, Jude. 